Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Stay Paid. Before we jump into it, we're going to be talking about something that's um, pretty, pretty exciting. Pretty popular. Pretty, pretty. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> free leads. We're going to be talking about how to get free leads with your sweat equity. But if you're looking to invest some of that check equity into a marketing product that will generate more referrals and repeat business for you, we're here yeah. for you. Yeah. One of the biggest pain points we hear from business owners is that they know they have to keep in touch with their database. They want to stay in touch to produce referrals, produce repeat business. They just don't know what to send. And most of the stuff that they're sending, I hate to be harsh, but it's basically <laughs> crap. We can be harsh. It's junk. People throw it away. It's just us listening. Wait until you see our product. We've been doing this for over a decade with over 100,000 small businesses getting raving reviews on it. Go check it out. We have a special offer for you. Yeah, special offer just for stay paid listeners. You can head on over to ReminderMedia.com slash stay paid offer to take advantage of that. That's ReminderMedia.com slash stay paid offer. Now this week's episode. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Welcome to another Silver Dollar episode of Stay Paid, the best sales and marketing tips of your week in 15 minutes left. We're going to keep rolling, man. Yeah, Silver Dollar-ish. We just That's went we through a, a whole process of recording a about a three-minute- You minute, guys have no idea how hard two minute show business is. took 40 minutes to record a two-minute clip. I used to hate on the, the sh- show business stars. <laughs> I don't sure. know what you call them. The celebrities, you know, the Justin Bieber's of the world. They got a hard life, man. Whew. It's rough. It's rough, man. This Justin audience Bieber is demanding, rough life. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. I so love when you guys compare the, 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 the 30 second ad reads that you do to like Justin Bieber, <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> like big celebrities. Like, who, man. Wait, 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 can you imagine wait, having wait. like a camera in your face? I just want you to think about this as a business owner right now. You won't shoot a simple video on your phone when no one's around where you can retake it a ton of times and freaking Brad Pitt's trying to do a romantic scene with a camera right next to him, like three <laughs> inches from his head. And he has to like romantically say a line and keep a serious face. Well, believe it or not, today's episode is not about how to perform on camera, whether you're Brad Pitt or Justin Bieber or Luke Hagry. <laughs> it's actually better than that. It's all about how to get free leads. Whether you're new to your business or looking to grow on a budget, you don't have to pay for leads. There's two types of capital you can inject into your business. There's check equity, mm. and then there is sweat equity. And today we're going to talk about the latter. Our team member, Gabrielle, she's our writer, actually wrote a three-part blog series on how to get leads for free. So we're going to go over on this episode the first eight that we recommend from part one of that blog. To read the entire series, you can go to ReminderMedia.com slash free leads. That'll give you all three parts of that series. You can look through that as well as all the other resources that are available there. But we're going to go through the eight on this episode. The first one, we've talked about this before, is to remind, actually tell your family and friends of the business that you're in. Yeah. So many people don't do this. They just assume that their family and friends know exactly what they do and exactly what they need. Let, let alone, like, I mean, the connection that you can have. Like, so many people, especially if you're, you're in real estate right now, you probably have family members and friends all across the nation. You can get a referral fee from them. Like, my brother got a referral fee from me. He got a referral fee from my brother. He's in Virginia. We're in PA. Got a uh, referral free free, a referral free fee, referral yeah, fee. a free referral fee from my aunt out in like South Dakota. And it's all because he's reminded his family members that he's in business of, as a real estate agent, but he took it one step further than that. He actually told them what he needs, right? So, hey, I can help you. Like, this is what I can do for you. This is if uh, what I'm looking for in a referral. Most of your family members are not educated on what you do and what you need. They know the maybe category that you work in or they know your job, but they don't know your job description and what you actually have to, you know, to get your job done, what you actually need. Yeah, we, we say, we give examples all the time. I, I gave an example of using someone for, Uh, life insurance. And I find out later that my brother was in a job where he sold life insurance policies. And he's like, why didn't you use me? I said, I didn't know. Like, I knew that you worked in finance. I thought you worked at a bank. I didn't know you had life insurance. Your action item for this one is in the next week, find a moment in a conversation with one family member and one friend to let them know what you do and that you're always willing to help someone who might need your services. The second one is introduce yourself to the people in your social circle. Oh, so this is actually leveraging the people that you hang out with <laughs> to let them know 
what you do for your business. But I think most people don't want to do it because they don't want to be the guy that, you know, always talks about like insurance if they're in the insurance salesman or something like that. But you've got to present what you do from the value standpoint. You got to present what you do from the pain point standpoint. An easy way to do that is to share stories. So an easy way in your social circle to talk about what you do is to share how you've helped somebody, the pain point that you solve for somebody in a story. It's so much easier. Think about this. If you're the guy at the gym and you do fitness training, right? It's one thing to tell me that you can help me do fitness training and you can put me through a workout program. It's another thing to tell me about a kid that you've been training that just got into a collegiate school or something like that, right? The stories are what really draw people in and get people interested in your services. Yep. So here's the action item straight from the blog on that one. List the groups in which you participate and the next time you meet each of them, pick out one person and just start that conversation. Find a way to let them know about your profession. Like, Can I give you a tip of how you to do that, ask them what they do. Perfect. Yeah. Ask them what they do because what's the natural thing that they're going to do back? Yeah. Oh, well, what do you do? What do, you do? Yeah. Or how's work been for you? Yeah. yeah. Right. How's work been for you, Josh, lately? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Well, how's work been for you, Luke? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Great way to start that conversation. <laughs> the next tip is to exchange names with people who provide you with services. So this could be your mailman. This could be the person yep. um, at the grocery store. This could be someone that you come in contact with. You speak about this almost from like your daily routine. Mm-hmm. Well, think about it. Like if you think outside the box a little bit, you could go like, you know, if somebody comes and provides plumbing services for you at your house, if somebody comes and provides like home security for you, or what about this? Like my brother, the Sprint guy who sold him his, his cell phone, he, that Sprint guy ended up referring him a ton of freaking really? business and the guy sold him a cell phone, but it's just because my brother was open to having the conversation with him of what he does. What a great yep. idea. I wonder how many people come into a phone store needing a phone because they yep. move or something. And like think that, about or, the or businesses, right? The business lines. A lot of people don't understand. Like I, when I worked for Verizon Wireless, I sold a lot of business accounts, right? So yeah. it's like huge connections there. That's awesome. So your action item is to make a point of meeting your mail carrier. If you can't do it in person, leave a note in the mailbox thanking them for being someone who on whom you can rely even during this highly unpredictable time. Speaking of uh, COVID and everything yeah. that we're going through, attach your business card. Don't sell them anything. Just let them know you're there to help. Let them know what uh, uh, services that you provide that will naturally lead to the next time they're in a conversation with someone who needs your services. Oh, my person yep. just dropped me off a nice little note in the mailbox. The next one is- I have a quick is, caveat there real quick. Yes. Sorry. My dad is a mailman and oh, nine yeah. times out of 10, he is the one that always is getting the change of address forms. So if you want to keep that in mind as a real estate agent, those people- are great to you know That's connect with and network point. with because there they're consistently getting those forms. I knew that your dad was a, a <clears throat> mail carrier. Shout out to Chris. That's just that's such a cool trivia fact. Yeah, yeah. I've never known a mailman. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I meet your dad? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next tip is to reach out to past clients. Yes. This is the one that's so obvious, but so few people do it. It's it's really weird. It's like, I think it's because you feel like there's nothing that you have for them anymore. From a value standpoint, you feel like you've gotten them through the transaction, you serviced them, and now they're a past client. So it's not like you're trying to not touch base with them, but you just don't have anything to offer them. That's the biggest thing I hear is like, what would I say? Just simply reaching out and checking in and seeing how they're doing is more than enough. And then if you want to it's take it- the more than 98%. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it is. Then you want to take it the next level, right? Send them something that's special, that's unexpected. Yeah. So not even on their home anniversary sale, right? Or the anniversary of their home sale, not even on the moment where you actually service them a transaction, out of the blue, just send them a nice note. Hey, yeah. I was thinking about you today and hope you're doing well. Really appreciate it, your business. A simple thank you like that goes a huge way. Yeah, what is it? Sean Carpenter has the, the high fives? Right. He does the high fives where he'll reach out to five people or, or write uh, five handwritten notes. Oh, he sent was. me a great one. Yeah. He wrote a letter to Evelyn, my little girl, oh, and g- basically said, um, Evelyn, here's your first um, piece of realtor junk mail or realtor. <laughs> I forget what he said. Realtor marketing mail or something like that. And I was Dude, like, that is brilliant. so freaking He's clever. So creative. Yeah, man. it was awesome. Action for this one is to call each client and ask how they are. Check your notes for some personal information that will give you a way to start the conversation. Or if you sent them something nice, use that as a jumping point into the conversation. If you're stuck, you can try using a script to guide you through. And we actually have scripts linked to in this blog post that we're referring to. 
The next one that we have is to partner up with related businesses. So yes. this one I know is a huge passion of yours. You coach yep. this on our welcome webinars, even as it connects to the magazine. Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest ways to increase your reach and increase your business um, without doing a lot of work. It's you have vendor partners that help you get a transaction across the table. So if you think financial advisor, it might be an estate planning attorney, it might be an accountant. If you're a real estate agent, it might be a mortgage broker, right? It might be an inspector, contractor, tons of businesses that help you get a deal done. Those should be businesses where you join together and you cross promote. They have a database of clients that you don't work with. You have a database of clients they don't work with. It's natural synergies. It's non-competitive. It's a value add to your client base. So you should be doing co-branded marketing with them, co-branded events, co-branded educational content, pull out your phone, start interviewing the local contractor you work with. Here's what it takes to do a kitchen reno. Like my wife and I are trying to reno our bathroom. $23,000 to winner, to winner, (laughs) to (laughs) reno a freaking bathroom. And I'm just like, holy crap. Now I'm going to get multiple quotes because that seems pretty high, but you should be the real estate agent that's educating me on that stuff. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> Here's your action for this one. Pick three businesses or organizations each day for the next week, just the next week. Introduce yourself to the owners or managers. You can do one better by purchasing something from them or volunteering some of your time. Give these people several business cards or leave a personally branded copy of American Lifestyle Magazine with them. Let them know that you'll recommend them and request that they do the same. So our next tip, which I believe is number six, is to volunteer, speak at, or attend community events. Huge to get involved within the community. Yeah, I would encourage you that um, you could start with like your charities in your community that you support. Uh, So they might not, it might not be a speaking gig, but you can actually volunteer. You can give back. You can get to know the person that is leading that charity. More than likely, that person is an influencer in the community and is very connected. The, The caveat I give there is it has to be with a heart wanting to give. It can't be with a heart wanting to take. You have to know that this is a long term game. I think of like, there's a guy at my church named Ben. He has this ministry called the table ministry. He's down in Kensington and now it's spread out across the country. He's just opening up one in Virginia and he is so well connected within the city of Philadelphia, mainly from he's just serving the homeless down there every weekend. And if you gave back to him, if you got involved in in him and the homeless people, he would start becoming an advocate for you. And this is a guy that's an influencer and just by his word of mouth would probably bring you so much business. Yeah, I think it's important for people to really choose something that you you do believe in. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can't fake it. It will that will backfire on you. Action item for this one is to find an event in the next month at which you can volunteer your time or expertise and connect with the organizer. Uh, One tip is not to overlook your local chamber of commerce. There's an opportunity there. Most will routinely host speakers. So this would be on the speaking side who can contribute to the success of local businesses and your knowledge of the market and what attracts people to an area will be quite valuable. Number seven is to write or contribute to articles, podcasts, and publications. Now, this is one that people might think and be like, oh, no, I'm not a writer. But you can, you don't have to you don't have to just do the writing. You can also uh, get interviewed on podcasts yep. or contribute uh, to publications on with your expertise in your yeah. business. We've had listeners reach out to us to be interviewed on our podcast, right? Will Penny was an avid listener, and then he reached out to be interviewed. I mean, the guy does over 200 plus transactions a year as a real estate agent, and he's gone on to be interviewed on multiple podcasts. It's a brand credibility, right? It builds your credibility as a brand. People just like to see that you've been interviewed. It naturally makes you look like a million bucks. And then on top of all that, all the connections. We're now connected to Will and talking to him in a bigger way. Yeah. Well, the other thing you can do is you don't have to write articles, but if you connect with websites that are providing content in your area of expertise, let them know that you let them know your resume, right? What you've actually actually accomplished. And then say, I'm always available for a quote. If you're writing a story and you need an expert opinion, put me on your list to reach out for, for quotes. That's great for the radio stations in your area, the local news stations. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really where the sweat equity comes into play. It's not hard. You just have to take the time to actually do it. Mm -hmm. So your action item for this one is to go through the podcasts that have guests in your industry on. So if you're in real estate, go through all of the real estate podcasts. Don't just look at the top 10. Go deeper than that. Put your credentials together and pitch them to have them on your show. We talked about it. People have gotten on our show by doing that. Uh, People want to hear from people that have done it before and, and have had success. 
And the last one, this one comes with the mega caveat that's existed for the last year of our lives is knock on doors. Oh, if safe, if it's safe in your area. Well, you could call on doors. Door knocking. You can also call you know, on Circle doors. prospecting. Yeah. Like one of the greatest ways to find listings right now, if you're a real estate agent, is to call the neighborhood surrounding a listing that just recently popped up or recently sold. Yeah. So like just pick the 50 closest, 100 closest homes and, and call those and literally call them with education. Hey, I'm educating you to let you know this is what just happened in your neighborhood. Here are the trends. Wanted to know if you were curious or if you ever thought about selling your home. Love that. And if you are going to knock it on doors or at least dropping things off for people, again, if it's safe, you can go to ReminderMedia.com slash printables to find lots of creative ideas there. So there you go. There are eight ways on how you can get leads for free. Thank you so much for listening. Head on over to StayPaidPodcast.com for the show notes and the video of this episode. And then to get that full blog series, you can go to ReminderMedia.com slash free leads. We'll link to that in the show notes of this episode as well. To support the show, we'd love it if you'd subscribe on Apple Podcasts podcast, leave a review just to let us know how we're doing. Make it five stars. Even if, <laughs> even if you say we suck, just give us five stars. Anyway, <laughs> five uh, stars. We don't want you suck. to lie. We just want you to <laughs> give five stars. And the best way is to tell a friend about this episode. Um, did you say, it's, uh, Luke, did you see that it's supposed to rain this Wednesday? Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to rain. It's, it's, I was going to take, I actually have off work. I was going to go golfing. So really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of rain, what does a cloud wear under his raincoat? I don't know. Thunderwear. <laughs> <laughs> I have now heard this joke, I think, six times. Josh, you love this joke. I was joke. very curious how you were going to rope in golfing and... Oh that was my good gosh. Time. Good for you. You're welcome, Ariel. If you'd like to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com and follow us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acre. Pick one of these tips, implement them. Here's the one I would suggest, which all of you should be doing, is reach out to your past clients. At least talk to your past clients once a quarter, whether that's through a phone call, a text message, a pop by. Get on the phone with them, have a convo with them, build the relationship. They're going to be responsible for the majority of your business. Remember this, though, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer is top producers hear these tips and they take action on them. Take action on that today. 